Hey guys, today is a Saturday, November the 26th of 2022, and I wanted to go over the US dollar, do some psychoanalysis and looking at the charts and uh, techniques. Without any further delay, let's get into it. If you guys uh, watched my last video, I was, uh, I think the title was the weekly and the uh, daily uh, hit a peak, and so far that kind of played out pretty good, if you ask me. So you know our motto, we started with the weekly. And we're using data from like November of 2006. And there's two important cycles here. One is the uh, 173 cycle. And we just had a peak somewhere around September. And now the cycles are down. We uh, look at the dominant cycle, which is a second cycle here. Uh, we hit uh, the dominant cycle is 82, mind you. We hit a peak around November, you could say November the week of November 7th. And now these cycles uh, are pointing down to like August of 2023. So you do a composite of those two. Mind you, the uh, 82 is a little stronger than the uh, 173. Uh, the 82 Bartels is 94.96, so it's pretty strong. And also in regards to strength, so this is a composite of this uh, cycle, 173 and 82. You can see that they're pretty much in sync to the downside. But let's look at the daily to see if we have any clues in regards to a price action. Okay, so this is the daily chart, uh, and I'm going to use data from uh, pretty much June, January of 2015. I think of the last video, I don't know if I said June, or maybe I meant January, but I'm just going to stick from January on of 2015, and I'm just going to keep things a little more consistent in regards to the uh, time frames that I use these cycles in. So there's a few cycles here that are important, in my opinion. One is the 328. This one hit a peak around October of 28 and it's pointing down let's move this a little over and then there's a couple of here there's a 219 and 257 uh, but i feel like the next important cycle here will be the dominant cycle which is the uh, 94. And the reason why i wanted to show you this because there's uh interesting dynamics playing here we kind of over we, we 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 sold off here uh, we hit a peak around September, right? And November is uh, typically strong in the dollar. So it kind of got ahead of itself. Um, and now, in regards to seasonality, December is weak. So could it be that things are going inverse? I don't know. I mean, those are the things I think about. <laughs> Meaning that seasonality-wise, December is weak. And now... Uh, the dollar is going to go up in December, you know, and then maybe stall in, in January. I don't know, because it's already so oversold. Unless, you know, it's going to just continue going down. That could be a possibility also. But nonetheless, uh, uh, the cycles are indicating in regards to the daily on the dominant cycle that the cycles now are going up into uh, January. So these are the kind of things that you're going to come across when you're doing analysis in regards to cycle and, you know, whatever technique you use in theory. And the things that just kind of look a little weird. Sometimes they're not all going to be in sync. We know that the uh, weeklies are down. Uh, we know seasonality wise, uh, November is pretty, pretty decent, pretty strong. And then December is weak. Uh, and we just had this nice little pullback. So I don't know if it's going to be like an ABC correction down. Uh, so, you know, there's some things you got to think about. But uh, the uh, dominant cycle now just hit a trough, which is uh, around November 23rd. And now the cycle is up. While the 328, which is one of the strongest cycle here, is down. So if you do a composite of those two, this is what you get. So could we get a little rally into December? It's possible. Seasonality says December is weak. So, hmm. We got to look at Elliott wave too. See where we're at here. Is this the fifth wave? I've been, I've been thinking about it. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at it. So I have so many charts and information in my head. I don't want to say something and it's wrong. So this is what the uh, daily is indicating. A possible bounce here. 
into uh, January and then, you know, come down. So let's see. Let's continue with our uh, analysis and look at seasonality and see what seasonality is saying about the U.S. dollar. Okay, so here we have a seasonality uh, chart that I like to use. A uh, set of months in which the U.S. dollar closed higher than it opened from 2018 to 2022. And I like to use certain numbers. Uh, I like to use 5, 10, and 20. So five-year average. You can see in re regards to seasonality, November is, is a little stronger. Uh, not that much, but it's pretty strong. Now, August and uh, September pretty much are the strongest. And then October gets a little dip. And there's no data for December. Uh, and then January. Looks like February is probably the strongest. We've been a five year time frame. Let's go to a 10 year, and you can see that uh, from August to November is pretty much flat, you know. And then December is the weakest. So typically, December is the weakest. And then January is just a little stronger, and February is the strongest. Uh, we could do, we could look at 15 here. Let's see. Yeah, November strongest, December still the weakest. So now we're getting a clue that December is the weakest between November and January. And then 20 year, you can see that November is a little stronger and it's a little more, kind of more flat. Well, February is a little stronger here, but the, the, the theme here is that December is like the weakest out of all the 12 months. So something you want to keep in the back of your mind when you're doing the dollar. Let's go to our next clip and see what we could get out of there. Okay, so this is the uh, US dollar. We're gonna put a five year average and see what we get out of there. You go to the five year, you can see that we just kind of go sideways here. And then from like, you could say December, uh, you could say December 29th all the way uh, not December, November 29th, all the way to the 1st of December, things just kind of get a little weaker, kind of go sideways and just push lower into December. So that confirms the five year uh, showing that December is kind of weak. The other chart didn't indicate it was kind of blank, but you could kind of get an idea. If we put the uh, 10 year average, what price action it kind of goes sideways and then uh, around December 5th, it kind of takes a dip and it kind of just mm, pretty much goes sideways. But it gets lower from uh, November. So it's a little lower. If we do a uh, 15 year average, which is the orange one, you see that uh, from December 1st, it kind of takes a dip into uh, the six and then it kind of goes up and then just kind of goes sideways. So the uh, 15 and the 10 year take a little dip in the first week, uh, first, second week maybe, and then it just kind of goes sideways while the five year takes a dip, goes sideways, and then uh, by December 12th, it uh, makes another leg lower. So interesting uh, price action for December. Uh, to see how this is all going to play out, but we're getting a little clues on uh, what could be the probability of what could uh, play out in December using the five and ten and the fifteen-year average. This is a chart I haven't I haven't showed on my uh, video presentations. This is the uh, Commitment of Traders report on the U.S. dollar index. You can see somewhere around here when it was getting very toppy, we were at somewhere around minus thirty thousand commercial. And if we go all the way over here, we're hovering around 20, minus 29,000. Those are commercial, commercial are building a position here. It all depends if we could take out that low right here of 104. If we could take out that low, looks like commercial is already, it's going to push lower. They're going to start accumulating. You can see that uh, large speculators, uh, they were kind of flat as it was going up, kind of flat. They kind of sold off here, then it pushed higher. 
And then they were just been sideways. And now they're just kind of selling off a little bit. This was that, that low part when doing that high. So they're right here too. So pretty much they're mirroring the uh, commercial. So if we take out that low, uh, large speculators are going to push lower. And uh, commercial are going to start accumulating. So we're at a crossing point right here. And then knowing that the seasonality uh, cycles are down, seasonality December is uh, very weak. All you got to do is now just pay attention to this low and then look at the uh, commitments of trader report uh, in the next couple of weeks and see if they, if uh, commercial is accumulating. That's the key in regards to uh, uh, commitments of traders report, in my opinion. Okay. So this is going to be my last video. I just wanted to show you some, uh, Kind of everything is summed up here. I'm working on on getting all my analysis and putting it on trading view and just kind of putting my notes there. So this is going to be like my template uh, instead of going through all these programs and just kind of have it all here. So that's kind of like what I'm working on. Just a heads up. So you can see that the MACD was giving you heads up that potential earning point was coming into play with the uh, histogram momentum getting weaker even though it didn't cross over. Let's look at the uh, weekly. And that white line is the uh, weekly, the 173. It's just a reminder that the cycles are down. And the uh, blue one is the dominant cycle, which is a little more fractal. We peaked around the week of November 7th. And that's what's showing also that it's down. We had the crossover on the MACD. And, uh, you know what's going on. Sell signal right now, as of this week, on the uh, dollar. There is a midpoint here in the parallel channel that could find support, and also the uh, 61.8, which is 102.85. So if it flushes down, uh, these are possible targets to the downside. The next one will be the 50%, uh, which is 95. I don't know if it's going to get down there that fast, but you never know. But I could kind of see it more realistically go down here. And then let's look at the uh, daily. So we know that the week that the weekly has a sell signal. Uh, we definitely know the daily has a sell signal way back from uh, October uh, 4th. You know, we got a retrace. Uh, never took out the signal. And it still remains uh, bearish. Now, interesting price action. We made a low here. What is this? Uh, like 105. So could this be a fail new low? And next week we rally. Uh, looking at statistics, uh, the fifth week looks uh, pretty bullish and promising. I don't know by a lot, but it's definitely you know pretty strong. Pretty much the last week of November. Uh, looking at uh, maybe like the 28th, 29th, 30. Definitely the 30 has a lot of uh, regards to statistics in regards to a uh, trading day and uh, stuff like that. A very strong uh, price action to the upside. So it wouldn't surprise me knowing that the uh, daily uh, dominant cycle, it's now pointing up if this could get some little Momo next week. Uh, could it stall? Yeah, it could stall somewhere around here. I can't see it go higher than 107, but you know, you never know. I mean, it could definitely find resistance up here, 109. It all depends on price action, news, and whatnot. But I could see a rally, and if I was to guess, maybe it'd be like 107, and maybe just, you know, lock in profits if it, you know, bounces. Uh, but you see that the uh, divergence on the uh, histogram is uh, positive, and it pulled back, and it stalled, and it kind of got positive, and then just kind of, you know, undecided right now. Uh, I'm going to pop up a calendar I have here of some notes. And you can see that, um, well, not notes, just calendar. So uh, this is the last week. So this week could be a little strong uh, in regards to maybe some upside Momo. Uh, but the strongest day would be the uh, 30th. That that would be a very strong day. Uh, the 29th, uh, 29th and 30th, probably even Monday. But, you know, Monday could be, you know. It could be either or, but I know definitely the 29th and the 30th is actually the strongest. This week is pretty, pretty strong for the dollar. So it could go up and then December 1st, 2nd, 
that's when it could uh, uh, stall and then start pushing lower if it's going to follow the uh, seasonality. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm seeing. If we take out this low right here, 105, then definitely it's going to push lower. And I already showed you some targets to the downside. Now, what could be the uh, curveball is that it's not going to follow the seasonality um, in regards to being weak in December. And it's going to chuck along and it's going to close above 108. It's going to test uh, this uh, trend line at 110. And then dig in into 111 and start, you know, trying to retest that high in December. That is going to be the curveball because everything on the weekly are down. Uh, and we know that the dominant cycle on the daily is up. But we know the seasonality wise, uh, the dollar's weak in December. So those are the little things, the little nuances that, you know, you have to kind of think about and then, you know, do some statistics. And, uh, and then look at December and what could December be. So I just gave you some statistics in regards to uh, November that this uh, week coming up could possibly be strong, but I don't know how strong it would be. Uh, it was going to test 107. And that could be a probability. That could be high. If it goes higher, then it's going to surprise me because I'm leaning more that it's going to go lower. I'm going to sign out. Hopefully you liked this video and I'll uh, keep you posted on my thoughts on the dollar using WDN price and time and cycle analysis.